Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen. I sometimes go by Goddess Kring. I'm not even sure if I'm going to upload this video, but I'm going to talk about the war in Gaza. I am very, very, very upset about what's happening to the people in Gaza. And I am somebody who thinks that those people in Gaza deserve humanitarian aid and they deserve um, water and food and they deserve to have homes to live in and I think that what the Israeli army is doing is wrong and it's a form of terrorism and it's bizarre to me I have a lot of friends online and some of them seem like loving people in many ways and intelligent and yet they think Israel can do no wrong and in the United States of America if you criticize anything about Israel, you'll, you're called, I, I have been called anti-Semitic, and I am not anti-Semitic. I am anti-violence, anti-terrorism, anti, I don't like bombs, okay? I don't think that you, if you bomb somebody, especially if they live in like a concentration camp, I mean, the people in Gaza, they can't go anywhere. A lot of them don't even have clean water to drink. It's like, it's like they can't escape and they're being attacked. And I don't know who started it first. Did Hamas start with the suicide bombings and the rockets? Did Israel start? I mean, that's stupid. That's like two little kids in a playground saying, well, he hit me first, so bam, I'm going to hit them. And it's like one side blames the other. It's us versus them, which is ridiculous because we're all a human race. We are all human beings. We are not us versus them. You know, even I do it. I'm an artist. And I think, well, I'm an artist. And that person isn't an artist. Therefore, they don't understand me. So I can see one side is afraid of the other. They're both very angry. But what makes me really mad and really frustrated and really sad is, you know, the irony, okay, the irony of it, the hypocrisy of it. It's like Israel says it's against terrorism, and yet what it's doing with phosphorus and bombs is a form of terrorism. War is a form of terrorism, in my opinion. You are shocking people and killing them and scaring the hell out of them and blowing them up. Literally blowing people to bits is not self-defense, okay? I don't know what Hamas is calling it, what they do. They, they're a little, I think they're, actually Hamas is a little more honest about being mad at Israel. And, oh yeah, we're going to attack you. Whereas Israel uh, sanitizes their word and says, we are just defending ourselves, totally denying the fact that they are killing and murdering women, children, civilians, hospitals. And then they, then they say, well, they're hiding weapons in those hospitals, so we have to bomb those hospitals. Like, are you out of your mind? I don't even care if that's true or not. If somebody is in a hospital bed injured, they don't deserve to get bombed. I'm sorry. I don't think those people deserve to get bombed. And the fact that it's it's being denied, that Israel says that it's just doing self-defense is insanity. That is attacking. That is not self-defense. That is attacking somebody. That is attacking them. And so why wouldn't the other side want to retaliate? If one side does something violent, usually it's human nature that somebody will get mad and want to fight back. And so the fight just continues until everybody's dead, I guess. I don't know. It's so sad to me. I am again, What I want is humanitarian aid. And wasn't it Jesus and Martin Luther King who said, love your enemy? And I think even the Dalai Lama says that it's better to let somebody kill you than to kill them. The best thing to do is to try to take away their anger so they don't want to kill you. I think most people don't want to kill other people. Most people are reasonable and if you give them, ask them what they want, that's when Jesus and Martin Luther King said, love your enemy, I think what they meant was try to have compassion for your enemy's point of view if you can and try to understand why they're mad at you and then try to help if you can try to give them what they want then maybe they won't hate you it takes it takes guts to do that it's very very brave for somebody to be nonviolent and to try and do something to help the other person then maybe the person won't want to attack you you see and really 
it's weird in the United States of America, Israel is Fran is is talked about like it's the underdog. But the truth is, actually, the Palestinians and the people that live in Gaza are the underdog because they are living in utter poverty. They don't really have like state of the art weapons or supplies or power. And the Israeli army has millions and trillions and billions of dollars and tons and tons of weapons. I mean, they could kill the whole planet with their weapons. Probably they could just kill everybody on this planet with the weapons. I mean, it's horrible. I don't even want to say that. But the irony is during the Holocaust, the Jewish people were thought of as less than human. And like, let's, you know, clean, clean them off the earth as if that's okay. That's completely wrong. But there's something similar happening with the Gaza thing. It's like we are labeling those people in Gaza that are dying. Oh, well, those are a bunch of terrorists. You know, they're just a bunch of terrorists. They're human shields. They're human beings. Those people are human beings being blown up. Are you crazy? Why desensitize yourself from reality? The reality, I've seen some videos of people dying in Gaza. That's real. I saw people coughing up blood. I saw uh, children blown up. I mean, why is that okay? Israel is doing that, and it's not okay. If Hamas was doing that, I would also say that's not okay. I don't care who is doing it. It's wrong to bomb people. It doesn't help the world. I don't understand why people... I don't know the entire history of everything, but that doesn't matter. You know, it's the Tina Turner song, I don't care who's right or wrong, I just don't want to fight anymore. You know, I know that sounds corny, but it's true. It's like if one side blames the other, what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's never going to end. If, if one side keeps blaming the other side, then the, the violence will continue forever. You know, it'll never be resolved, ever. There's got to be another way. There's got to be another way. There has to be another way aside from killing people. There must be a smarter way to deal with the conflict between us and them. You know, the, the Palestinians and the Israelis. It's like there's got to be a way for, for people, for the policies to change. I think humanitarian aid, you know, send them what they need instead of Israel could be dropping food and supplies. I'm sure that would surprise Hamas. That would surprise the Palestinians if the Israelis actually gave them a bunch of medical supplies, stopped the bombing, and gave them medical supplies. You know? Regardless of what Hamas does, stand up and be the smarter one and stop being violent and give them medical supplies, give them water, you know, give them normal human rights. Stop treating them like they're all a bunch of terrorists. To label somebody a terrorist is a horrible thing. How do you know that's what they are? They're humans. They're human beings. We're all human beings on this planet together. And also, I feel horrible about the war because I'm thinking of the people, yes, the plants and animals. Think of all the plants and animals in Gaza that are just being killed or starving to death because nobody can feed them or take care of them because of the war. And it's so sad. So I am, I am in support of anyone who gives humanitarian aid to people who need help in the entire world, not just in Gaza or Israel, but in the entire planet Earth. I love people who actually help other people survive instead of attacking them. Whether it's terrorism or self-defense, it's the same thing. Terrorism, self-defense, uh, war, you know, like war is like rich people doing terrorism. It's legal terrorism. War is legal terrorism. And Terrorism is illegal war, basically. It's the same thing, really. It's just that one of them is considered good and one's considered bad. The theory, you know, this is like a theory of one kind of violence is self-defense, one kind of violence is terrorism. But the reality physically is that it's just people murdering each other. That's all it is. People murdering each other and acting as if it's one is terrorism and one is whatever. But I think Hamas actually thinks it's defending itself too. I'm not sure what they think because in America, I'm not even told what Hamas, I, I don't even get to hear what they say actually. I have to hunt around for it. So in the United States, we are only told 
we are we are only we are basically presented in the media in the United States at least mainstream media that Israel is right and Hamas is always wrong no matter what and Israel is always right no matter what that's insanity nobody is always right no matter what and nobody is always wrong no matter what that's crazy so I am upset and also I posted something about people having post-traumatic stress disorder probably Probably most of the people that live in Gaza have post-traumatic stress disorder. How could you not have post-traumatic stress disorder if you grow up as a little child around crazy violent things happening? And it could be from Hamas, it could be from Israel. Either way, just violent things happening from all sides. How could you not be stressed? And somebody said, you know, they criticized me for saying that like I was insulting those people or making them making them feel worse. It's like that's not my point. My point was to have empathy and compassion for the fact that maybe that's why on both sides of the conflict some people are very angry and saying really hateful things to each other about each other and to each other. And some are not. Some are rational and staying rational about it post-traumatic stress disorder I'm sure I'm sure that a lot of Israeli people as well as people in Gaza especially Palestinians have a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder and I just think those people deserve empathy and compassion I think all the people not just one side or the other both sides they're all humans and they all they all want to live they all want to survive I think most people want to survive and quite frankly I think when someone becomes a suicide bomber to me that indicates that they are really really stressed out and upset if they think that they want to do that and dedicate their life to that mission that is an indication to me there's some post-traumatic stress going on right there because most human beings don't want to blow themselves up so if someone does want to do that think about what's in their mind and their heart to make them want to do that. I mean, that's very upsetting and it needs to be healed. Instead of hating those people, why not try to have compassion? I'm not saying it's okay what they're doing, but it's also not okay what Israel I mean, it's not okay what either side, the violence on either side is horrible in my opinion. No matter who's doing it and no matter why, just, you know, if you have a good reason to bomb somebody, or you have a bad reason to bomb somebody, what's really the difference? You're still bombing somebody. Whether you have a smart reason or a dumb reason, it's still, you're bombing somebody, you're killing somebody, you're harming somebody. It's still the same thing. That's just my point. So I am upset about the war and I am a, um, a fan of people helping each other and humanitarian aid and I'm not a fan of violence. And I think it is smarter to find a better way to deal with this situation instead of attacking because one violence only breeds more violence. It's not, nobody's going to win. So, although the Israel, you know, if you're keeping score like it's a sports game, the, the Israelis are winning. They are killing more people. The Israelis have killed several hundred people, I think, at this point, and Hamas has killed only a few. And I don't even know if that's their goal. I don't know what their goal is, but if you're keeping score on the death toll, Israel wins. Israel is killing more people than the other side. And that's horrible. So again, I'm against the violence on both sides. I'm just kind of upset that when Israel does something violent, it's called good and self-defense. And when Hamas does something violent, it's called terrorism. And to me, violence is the same thing no matter why someone is doing it that's my opinion so I think humanitarian aid and maybe abolishing the whole wall I think they should tear the wall down I think those people should share the land or come up with a two-state solution you know Israel over here Palestinians over here I don't know how they do that but there's got to be a way to share the land or move somewhere else, figure out a different geographical location that people, if they can't just get along and realize they're all just humans and it doesn't have to be us versus them, you're this and I'm that, why does it have to be so separate? Okay, so there it is.
It's all just an illusion that we're separate. <sighs> okay. Thank you for listening. I'm Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I'm entitled to my opinion just like you're entitled to your opinion. We are all human beings and we have different ways of seeing this. Uh, I'm just not a fan of hypocrisy. Violence is violence no matter why it's being done. That's my main message. So, okay. Thanks.